Okay, this is the introductory video for STAT 1150, summer 2018. Uh, first of all, you, you may download this um, from Blackboard, this being uh, the syllabus. And you notice up uh, here, I tell you to please watch uh, the introductory video, which is uh, what I'm doing right now. Uh, well, let me tell you, my philosophy of teaching an online course is to keep it as much like a face-to-face -face class as possible. So, um, you know, in the spirit of the very first day, I went, uh, would go into a classroom. I would uh, go over the syllabus with my students. Uh, that's what I'm going to do in this video. So, so anyway, guys, um, uh, my name is Doug Darbro. I've uh, been uh, at Shawnee State University now for 24 years. I have taught statistics here over 100 times. So uh, I think that qual uh, classifies as being experienced uh, or maybe just old. I don't know. So I uh, guess office hours, um, uh, Wednesday and Friday, those are held virtually, and uh, there'll be more information on how to access those and uh, get supplemental instruction and tutoring uh, later on in this video. Uh, phone number, you know, contact information, my email, uh, prerequisite to take math uh, 0101 or placement, and uh, you've got a map of my office. My office is hard to find, and with an online course, I don't have as many students stop by, but uh, if you do come looking for me, again, the math department suites are, uh, the suite is really uh, hard to find. Uh, the easiest way probably to get here is there's a, there's a small door to the right. Uh, so this is Massey Hall, and this over here is called the administration building. So there's a small door right there. If you'll come through that door and just walk straight across the hallway, go through that door, uh, my office is second on the left. So, guys, it gives you an indication of where I'm located. Um, catalog description, general education requirement. I'm not going to read that to you uh, because I know you can read it. Uh, and, and, again, I encourage you to download uh, the uh, syllabus uh, and have a hard copy of it. But, anyway, good thing on the GEP requirements is this course uh, fulfills the quantitative reasoning component of the GEP, which means you can check off one more box. Uh, ADA statement, uh, if you're entitled to any accommodations, uh, please let me know. I'll do everything in my power to make sure that those accommodations are provided to you. So uh, if you do have an ADA statement, you know that uh, what you need to do is bring that to me, and, uh, and that provides a list of accommodations. And again, I'll do everything I can to make sure those are met. Uh, guys, this is kind of a duh paragraph. You need computer access. It's an online course, so uh, pretty obviously you would need uh, a reliable internet service and a, uh, and a computer. Um, now, there are ways to get around that. Some people go to the library. Some people uh, uh, borrow a computer. Uh, some people come to campus and, and watch the instructional videos and um, you know access the, the materials and resources uh, with computers here on campus. So, but it sure does make it a lot easier if you have uh, a reliable computer. Technology requirements. I used to require a uh, Texas Instrument, uh, like a TI-83 or 84. I no longer do that because I use StackCrunch. StackCrunch is a statistical software package that's included in your access card to my, my stat lab. So once you access your activation, uh, my stat lab is included, and I'll demonstrate, um, you know, how to use this. Uh, scientific calculator is, is handy just in case you need to take a square root or add some numbers or multiply some numbers, uh, but don't get anything fancy there. It's something uh, very basic. Uh, guys, I'm requiring Remind. Uh, Remind is a texting program. Uh, I actually uh, became aware of Remind from my daughter's volleyball coach. I uh, thought it was really cool because you sign up for it and I can just send push reminders out uh, through Remind. So uh, you sign up for it. I never see your, uh, uh, your, your phone number. You don't see my phone number, but uh, I can send push notifications through to you through your phone. Now, um, guys, you're required. And I'm actually going to turn this into a, uh, a quiz. So as soon as you sign up for Remind, send me an email, and you're going to get a 25 out of 25 for a quiz called Remind. Um, now, instructions on how to uh, uh, 
to to access or to sign up for Remind uh, or on Blackboard under content. I'll show you that uh, in just a second. Uh, guys, the online course management system that I use is my Math Lab, my Stat Lab, same thing. Uh, I usually refer to it as my Stat Lab because this is a stat class. But if I slip up and call it my Math Lab, don't, don't uh, flip out on me. It's the same stuff. Uh, we're using a Sullivan book. It's called Statistics Informed Decisions Using Data. And you access uh, my math lab by typing in this link. Now, let me get out of this and show you another way that you can, uh, you can get there. So uh, if we sign on to uh, MySSU uh, and go to Blackboard and click it again, you can go to our course site. And uh, you know, you're not going to see all this stuff over here because I've got a bunch of it hidden, but if you go to content, you're going to see this is where uh, our course materials and instructional videos are actually going to be housed. So if you click this link here, begin here, uh, you're going to get the syllabus. You're going to get uh, how to get started with my math lab. You're going to get the remind instructions, and you're going to have information, a video on how to get a temporary access code for my math lab if you need that. Okay, so again, a little bit more about that uh, in just a second. So let's go back to the syllabus and, uh, and uh, complete this. So um, guys, first thing I would do is I would access that uh, kind of how-to, how to sign up for my math lab. Uh, you're going to need three things. Uh, you're going to need your course ID. Uh, you're going to need a credit card. Uh, and uh, let's see, there's something else. Uh, well, it's, it's clearly... Uh, stated on the instructions on how to uh, sign up for my stat lab. Uh, something to keep keep in mind if uh, maybe funds are low, maybe you just don't know yet whether you want to stick with the class, go ahead and sign up for a 14-day free trial course uh, access. Again, if you don't know how to do that, watch this short video and I explain it to you. Okay. And um, Guys, another kind of a disclaimer. I do my best to keep the overall percentage on my math lab uh, as up-to-date and as good an estimate as possible. But sometimes this is just kind of hard to, um, uh, because of some, some nuances behind the scene with my stat lab, uh, it's sometimes it's, um, it's hard to keep it uh, perfect. So, guys, this may slightly over or underestimate your grade, but it does give you a pretty good indication of how you stand in the class. All right, what's the class look like? Guys, again, I told you that I try to keep my face-to-face uh, -face classes and my online classes as close to possible. So um, I post what are called instructional videos. So the very first week, we will cover class policies and how we define and classify data. The instructional videos for that week will be posted by noon on May 21st. There's an assignment that's posted on my math lab at the same time that is due the following Tuesday at 9 p.m. on May 29th. Now, assignments are usually due on Mondays, but because Monday of the first, well, actually technically the second week is Memorial Day, I didn't think that, you know, that that was really appropriate. In fact, I think that would been kind of a jerk move, really, to have your first assignment due on uh, Memorial Day. So I extended the due date one day. Um, now you can, you, you know, you can start watching videos on Monday and submit the assignment uh, on Monday, May 21st, if you choose to. This is just the deadline, and guys, I don't mess around with the deadline. When it's a deadline, it's a deadline. Unless you're in the hospital, unless you have a university excuse, uh, you're going to get penalized if you turn things in uh, late. Uh, you know, unless you and I have uh, uh, come up with some other agreement. So next week we start it all over, right? Instead of Monday, because it's Memorial Day, your videos will be posted on Tuesday, May 29th. And then we get back on this Monday, Monday, Monday um, timeline for your assignments being due at 9 p.m. So essentially, guys, every Monday, again, it's Tuesday because of uh, Memorial Day, but every Monday you're at 9 p.m. you're going to have an assignment that is due. Every Monday, again, except for Memorial Day, you're going to have videos that will be posted the Monday before the Monday that your assignment is due. 
All right, guys, around July 2nd, Monday, July 2nd, not around it, but exactly on it, you're going to take your midterm exam, and then we start over. Monday, July 2nd, we have videos that will be posted, and your assignment will be due the next Monday. Guys, your final exam is on Monday, July the 30th. Now, a couple of things to note. A 50% penalty will be assessed on work that is submitted after the due date. So it only applies on the questions that have yet to be submitted. So if you, for example, one of these assignments, you only get half of it done, but you got all the questions correct. So you have 50% on the, uh, on the assignment. The remaining 50%, you could get at most 25%, and that's contingent upon you getting them all correct. So the most you could get on that assignment would be 75%, given the scenario uh, that I just laid out. Uh, guys, exams are proctored by ProctorU, or you can come to campus and take them. Now, here's the deal. Like on Monday, July the 2nd, uh, if you come to campus... Your exam is in Library 110, and you can take it anywhere from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Guys, you can't begin before 11 a.m., and you must be finished by 4 p.m. So if you think it's going to take you a couple of hours to take the uh, uh, exam, uh, then you need to start no later than 2 p.m. I had a student not long ago. Uh, it was in a math, uh, a finite math course that I uh, taught it was online and uh, in that semester they had from four o'clock to nine o'clock uh, in other words they had to be done by 9 p.m. and he would always show up about 8 30 and um, they just didn't there was just no way he could do the exam uh, in you know 20 25 minutes like he was giving himself and he failed the course and um, primarily he failed the course because he didn't uh, manage his time well enough to get uh, to the test uh, and allow him enough time to take the test. Now, if you decide to take with ProctorU, let me tell you a little bit about ProctorU. It's an online test proctoring service. Uh, you have to have a webcam if you sign up with ProctorU. Uh, and I'll give you a lot more information as we get nearer to July 2nd on uh, what you do with ProctorU. You uh, show them your university ID. You sign up for your account. You, know, you, you give a time block from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., and you can take the exam from your uh, dorm room or uh, even from your house. So it keeps you from having to come to campus. Um, I think this will be the last semester that we're actually providing, uh, we're paying for this Proctor U service. Uh, I think starting in the fall, this is going to be uh, passed on to the student. But for the summer, we're still under a pilot phase. And the university is uh, actually paying for the ProctorU uh, uh, payments. Uh, supplemental instruction and tutoring. Guys, statistics gets difficult for some people. Uh, you have what's called a supplemental instruction leader. His name is uh, Zach uh, Schwe Schweinsberg. Uh, Zach is uh, a graduate student. He's in our graduate uh, uh, program here in uh, mathematics. And he's going to be uh, available these following times in the math lab for face-to-face -face tutoring. So, guys, if you're struggling uh, and you can come to campus, there's no reason not to get help. Uh, just arrange to come these times. Even better, if you can't come these times, Zach is available by appointment to do online tutoring. So... Uh, you would have to learn how to use Google Hangouts. It's very simple. Send Zach an email, which I'll gladly provide to you, and uh, schedule a Google Hangout session with him. Now, guys, you need to contact him at least a day ahead and, um, and schedule in advance a time for you guys to meet. Because you know, Zach's a very busy uh, person, and uh, so he's going to need a little bit of advance warning. And, guys, also you have drop-in tutoring uh, in... Uh, Massey 150. Uh, I don't know the, uh, the the times yet, but I'll be glad to pass that on uh, to you once uh, once they're set. So, guys, uh, how how are you successful? Uh, a lot of people think that um, uh, online courses are um, are easier. Um, I don't think they are. Uh, I don't think they're harder. Uh, I think it's just really about the commitment that you make to your class. 
uh, and again, I've taught uh, the online section quite a few times, but guys, you must watch the instructional videos. You're going to have, uh, well, really probably not five to six, more like uh, three to four, maybe even four to five hours of instructional videos per week. Guys, you got to submit your assignments on time, and you need to take your exam at the specified date unless other arrangements have been made. Calculating your final grade. Uh, exam one, exam two are 37 and a half percent each. Your assignments and sneaky quizzes, I'll talk about that in just a second, uh, are 25 percent. Uh, a note before I get to the sneaky quizzes, if you score higher on exam two than you did on exam one, I will, re will replace exam one score with exam two. It does not work in reverse. You get a hundred and a fifty you're stuck with the 100 and the 50. If you get a 50 and a 100, you get a 100 and a 100 because I replaced the exam one with your higher exam two score. Again, it does not work in reverse. The logic behind that is exam one is actually much easier, covers less material. And uh, again, the logic is if you didn't get it the first time around, but you, you show me that you you did get it on the second time around, then I think you deserve credit and your exam one will be erased. All right, gang, let's talk about these sneaky quizzes. Uh, to ensure that you just don't uh, jump on my math lab and do the assignments, that you actually do watch uh, the instructional videos, because to me it's the most important part of the class, uh, I embed these sneaky quizzes. Like they're for example, one quiz that will pop up in one of the videos is uh, I'm a scuba diver. I like to scuba dive. And um, I think when I put up one of those videos, I had just been scuba diving in Puerto Vallarta. And I said, okay, let's insert a sneaky quiz here. Send me an email by the time this assignment is due and say that Dr. Darborough's favorite hobby is like scuba diving. So anyway, my point is these things aren't mathematic or statistics related. Uh, they just proved to me that you are watching the videos, taking notes, and approaching the class like you should. So just kind of think about it as uh, kind of attendance points that I give to my face-to-face -face classes. Again, trying to make the face-to-face -face classes as much like the online classes as possible. So got a sneaky quiz. Um, well, you've already got one. I just told you. Uh, here's one sneaky quiz. Sign up for Remind. Sign up for Remind. Send me an email and you get 25 out of 25 points on that sneaky quiz. All right, uh, guys, grading scale. Uh, I don't think there's anything um, uh, unique about that. I think a lot of people, um, there may be something a little unique about this. I feel if you get 50% or higher, you shouldn't fail the course. So anything between 50 and 59 is a D minus. So you've got to get below a 50% uh, to fail the class. All right, sneaky quiz zero. So really, this video, by watching this video, you're going to start out with 50 out of 50 points. You've got a sneaky quiz for Remind. Again, send it to me right there. This one is worth 25 out of 25, and this one is worth 25 out of 25. total. So two separate emails for two separate sneaky quizzes. So guys, for this sneaky quiz here, the second part, the second 25 points, uh, send an email to me. Tell me your name and your preferred email address so I can set up a uh, course uh, distribution list. Uh, tell me something interesting about you. And type, I have watched the introductory video and understand the class policies and instructor expectations. And type, I understand there are two exams, and my exams will be proctored by ProctorU if I don't take them on campus. I understand that if I take my exam with ProctorU, then I'm required to have a webcam and reliable Internet service. So, guys, I look forward to working with you. Uh, I look forward to uh, making this um, a successful experience uh, for you. What I want now want to do is I want to get out of here, and I want to go to my math lab and show you how that works. So... Uh, in addition to the link to the introductory video, uh, you're going to see getting started with my math lab. You're going to see how to get a temporary access code if you need, and also how to sign up for Remind. Okay? So I want to demonstrate two things just to let you know 
uh, how things happen. So let's talk about Blackboard first before we go to my stat lab. Let me show you how a previous course plays out. Now I taught stat 1800 in the spring and that class is going to be was presented exactly the way your class will be presented. So guys when you come to Blackboard you're going to go to content just like my students did with stat 1800 in the spring and each week you're going to see a video for instructional videos. Now there's some other stuff, some handouts and data sets that I'll reference in these videos so you'll know when to, uh, uh, to access uh, you know, you know, data sets. But anyway, instructional videos for January 8th. I took it easy on them because it was the first week, so there was only one instructional video. But you can see as we got in a little more into the semester, uh, this particular week there were six videos. So guys, all you have to do is just click this. It'll take you to YouTube. Hey guys, stat 1150. Oh wow, I hate that. Okay, uh, go full screen, get out your notebook, start taking notes, because what I teach you in these instructional videos is what you're going to be tested on, and it's uh, what you're going to do uh, on my stat lab. All right? Speaking of my stat lab, what's that going to look like? Well, guys, let's go back to our course. So you have a My Stat Lab link right below the content. Again, you're probably not going to see any of this stuff here because I, I have it hidden. So it's going to take you to My Stat Lab. First of all, you got to get your account set up. Then you're going to sign in. Notice that... Uh, you know, my sign-in isn't even my complete uh, 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 email address. You can set your sign-in information or whatever. And the email account that you use doesn't have to be your Shiny account. If you have a Gmail or Yahoo or, or whatever it may be, uh, you can use it as your sign-in email. So when you sign in, let me show you what a completed course looks like. So uh, this is going to be you guys right here. So you would click this, but it makes the demonstration better if I show you uh, what uh, a pre-existing course looks like. So uh, STAT 1150 Fall 2017. So guys, when you click that, what they would do is they would go usually either to Assignment or Gradebook. So they would go to Assignment. They're going to see the assignment. Now, they can't get into this one because it's already closed, okay? But they would see the assignment. They would click it. Now, you can see it says, you may no longer work to improve your score on this assignment. But, guys, when you click that, if it's not beyond the date that I've closed it down, I'm not talking about the due date. The due date, you can, after the due date, you can still work on it. You just get half credit for the problems that you submit. But uh, let me see if I can find a, uh, well, here's, here's some practice problems that you'll see. So if you click that, what it'll do, it'll take you to a list of questions and then start clicking the questions. And um, you just start answering the questions. Uh, some are multiple choice. Some have you enter uh, uh, values in. So uh, just whatever. And again, if you watch the instructional videos, you're going to be prepared to take this because... Uh, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in teaching people uh, what they're expected to do. Gang, I don't know anything else really to, to talk about um, in, um, in this video. Um, here we are right here. You can see when you go to um, homework, and there's a quizzes and test uh, link there that, uh, where your test will be. But if you go to homework, you can see that there's... Uh, there's nothing up yet because I haven't uh, haven't created anything for you yet. So, uh, just trying to get the the ball rolling in terms of understanding class policies. Well, guys, that's all I got. Uh, again, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, stop by and, if you're on campus. Stop by and say hello. It's always uh, kind of refreshing to to meet my students and to get uh, you know get names with faces. So, guys, take care. I hope this uh, hope this works well for you.